Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your GIS News for Tuesday, August 2. National Security Minister Robert Montague has approved an interim plan of action to be implemented at the Firearm Licensing Authority, FLA. This follows the resignation of the board in light of alleged improprieties at the authority. The actions were outlined by Information Minister Senator Ruel Reed at a Jamaica House press briefing Wednesday. The Firearm Licensing Authority should not issue any approval for gun licenses or permits for the next seven working days. Two, the Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Shane Darling, over the same period of seven working days, will provide an update of the process of the Ministry of National Security Assessment Report on the Firearm Licensing Authority 2017 Allen Report and the status of the implementation of the recommendations to the minister. Minister Reed says the authority's CEO and staff are to give full support to the Justice Seymour Panton Review Panel to ensure full transparency and the integrity of the FLA. Following this, Cabinet will be briefed on the situation. The Tourism Enhancement Fund will be spending $1.2 billion over the next four years in Montego Bay to give the resort town a facelift. This is in addition to the $2.8 billion spent by the fund in the last 10 years. We're going to be reconfiguring the entire area from what is proverbially called Dump of Beach straight through to Dead End, which includes the hip strip that is occupying your mind somewhat. Somebody will want me to tell you that the private and public sector together have combined to create a new look experience that is going to define a new attraction and indeed a new presence of Montego Bay in the global tourism market. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett was speaking recently at the Invest Mobay Breakfast Forum. Among the projects are the relocation of utility wires underground, a $600 million closed harbor park, $110 million to improve water distribution, a $35 million roadway resurfacing project from Summit Police Station to Dead End, as well as a $60 million streetscaping and improvement of the airport roundabout. $252 million will be spent on landscaping the elegant corridor, and a $40 million program is underway to enhance the flankers' community on that roadway. The tourism minister, meanwhile, is encouraging greater investment in the European plan hotels along the Montego Bay hip strip. Under the European plan, prices quoted are strictly for lodging with meals, taxes and tips being billed separately. Even as he supports the build-out of all-inclusive hotels, Mr. Bartlett says the EP model will enable greater earnings from tourism. The guest is not interested anymore in destinations or even brands as we know them. They are now interested in experiences. And so to make Montego Bay pristine and come to mind, we have to build out experiences. Part of that build out, Minister Bartlett says, is greater investment in food tourism, which has some 88% of the world traveling for food. Permanent secretaries and heads of agencies across government are now up to speed with their role in the implementation of the recently passed Zones of Special Operations Bill. Prime Minister Andrew Holness on Monday updated government on the social intervention aspect of the bill. The act provides for special security measures in high crime areas while simultaneously ensuring social intervention. Stressing the importance of national security, Mr. Holness told the meeting that once a zone is declared, government agencies must make the needs of the zone their priority. Social intervention committees will be established within five days of the zone being declared and will be under the joint command of the Jamaica Constabulary and Defense Forces. And finally, Prime Minister Andrew Holness is calling on Jamaicans to use emancipation as a foundation to advance their freedom, particularly from criminals. We certainly cannot afford to betray history by any retreat or surrender. We cannot cede one inch of emancipated Jamaica to any force that would impinge on our freedom. We owe it to those who fought tirelessly and defiantly for our emancipation to ensure that no Jamaican today has their freedom trampled by criminal forces. The Prime Minister was addressing the nation on Tuesday in his Emancipation Day message. 
Leader of the Opposition, Dr. Peter Phillips, made a similar call for citizens to live in dignity, work in harmony, and to secure a better economic future. The examples of our freedom fighters must inspire us to assert our rights to live in a Jamaica that provides social justice and equality of opportunity to housing, to good security, healthcare, quality education and training, and a chance for progress and personal fulfillment. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.